Welcome to Go On The Run. And today, I wanna to show you an ORM that I found a few months ago. So what's an ORM? An ORM, well, by the way, ORM stands for Object Relational Mapper. So what does that mean? An ORM is responsible for the layer between your relational database, which we're using, because we're using SQL, and the objects that you manipulate in your program. Now remember, the two things are very different. In code, what you have are objects that might have references to other objects. In a database, you have tables that have reference to other than another table. So how do you marry these two? Where you come from the relational world into the object world, or you have stuff in objects in your program and you want to push it into the database. And so ORM takes care of this detail for you. So you'll get a better idea once you see some code. So let's jump in. So here I am. And I'm going to start with the code we wrote in the previous video for using SQL, Go and SQL. So I'm going to copy that code. And let me start up my Visual Studio Code Editor here. So this is the code that we had from before. And let me close this here. And this time I'll change this to using the GORM ORM in Go. Now I know this seems like a, a mouthful, but we're using an ORM and it's actually called Go ORM. No, G-O-R-M, sorry, GORM. Um, if you're coming from like Java, you'll know of several other ORM. Um, and so Hibatis, um, Eclipse Link, and so on. Uh, so in Go, like I said, so far, um, this is the one that I see that has some promise. I had some issues with it, but we'll talk about that later, but I still think it's promising. So, okay, so let's look at our code. I haven't changed anything in our code yet. So we had this connection string. We connected to our, we opened a database connection. And if we were successful, then we defer closing the database until the end of our program. And if you notice, we use insert SQL statement to insert record into our database. And then we can query and we can read those values. But in a real program, if we have users, we wouldn't be using individual variables. We'll actually use a type. So let's introduce a type. Okay. So now we have a type to represent a user. And maybe we will initialize that variable first. All right. So we have our user object that we've just initialized. And of course, we can still do things like, and this should still work. Okay. But let's think about it for a second. If we have a type, can we potentially augment our type with some methods that allow us to do things like, for example, imagine that now I have this type. What if I had some other object that abstracted the database away in such a way, allow me to do common CRUD operation? CRUD operations, by the way. So this corresponds to like your insert command to create an object select command um, sql statement command to retrieve object update command for sql to change things and of course delete to delete right so we call them crud and so it would be nice if i could do something like this now that i have a user i could say user that you know create for example that would be nice or maybe i use some other um, object like i use some orm that creates and i can say create this user object and it would do all this hard work of you know running this SQL statement for me, and so I could abstract this away. So if I had to write that, I might write a very basic ORM like this. I should just call this database. And then maybe let's say I decide to add the create method to my um, type. And so I do something like that, and then I pull this into here. All right, so something like that. And otherwise, what I can do is I use execute and and so now if I want to save something, I can do. So all I need now is an ORM, so ORM, something like that, okay? Um, so let's see, so I'm not doing a query, so let's uh, 
leave this out for the minute. Um, but you can imagine that how I can also add select to, you know, a query method to my ORM. So this allows me to do queries also. So yeah, maybe you might want to do that. Uh, let's see. Let's see if who oh, might we add a really want our query function to look like. So maybe something like this. So uh, so error there. Um, I want to do the same thing here. Check if I get a null pointer. Then you know I want to return an invalid parameter or something like that. Got to be careful because I take a pointer, so so I could pass a null object. We need to initialize actually our ORM here. I shouldn't create it this way. Let me create it this other way. I still get a pointer to my ORM, but of course I'll initialize it with the database that we got from, we, we created. Okay. Um, now you can make it that you say new ORM actually like creates a database. You could, I just open and close method on the ORM itself, but you get the idea. So we can certainly, add more, many more things to this, but let's just stick with this for now. Uh, we keep it sort of simple. Oh, so I need to return um, nil and this empty slice. And so if I can query, um, I have a slice. And so what I can do is create a new user and then I can put you that um, what was it oh I think we got back an ID why did we do that but anyway oh we selected we search for ID uh, okay let's take that out we search for username only because um, I don't think we have an ID field on our thing so Um, let's do you that name username okay so something like that and then we're not going to print this here we of course append this to our slice so we say users I'm returning users users Will append onto users this user. Okay, so we grow a slice and then we return. Something like that. Okay, or we just say a return actually. We good. Um, so our slice is nil, that's fine. Once we do append, append should, should grow it. Um, so where am I getting the error message from now? Um, oh, I have pointer to slice. Okay, so just a slice of user, not a pointer slice. Okay, so and then this comes from our ORM that we pass in. Okay, so this look like it will query. Oh, um, so once we finish this, then we return. Okay, so that seems like it should in theory work. And now once we have some, we can do, for example, Oh, users, we can create for some users. We don't need this. And we can do that we don't have an ID okay so let's say we did something like this um, okay we don't need to use ID here uh, why is this complaining uh, okay yeah we need the error also 
So I'll ignore that, pretending that oh, we don't have any problem. Okay, so this should, our program should still work, but notice what I have to do. I have some object here, some type that represent entities or things I have in my database. So this would, they call this entity in Java or uh, object oriented language, we call this entity class and instances of this class would be entity objects. So this is our entity type and we will create objects of this type called entity objects, okay? And we can see one of entity object here. We use it and we say save it to our database and we can also query our database. So these are the kind of things you have to use and write if you want to abstract. And notice our or save or create were specific to user. What if we introduce a profile or something, right? And so profile would be maybe user profile would include like the time zone setting, for example, right? Maybe I want to save um, a pointer to some sort of object that's represented location or time zone, okay? So now, if I wanna create that too, I'll have to add another create method, or at least make my create method um, use a type, like a interface type, and then within the create, I check to see what type of object I'm creating, and then insert that appropriate record. Now, do you see where this idea then of an ORM from object to relational mapping? is because within this ORM is where I'll look at the specific type user and say that it needs to go to the users table, or if given a type profile, I'll say, oh, I have to map that to the profile table. And so depending on which type I'm given or asked to query, I'll do the mapping from objects to the relational rep, um, commands, whether it's inserting, deleting, and so on, and of course, to the appropriate tables. So that's where the abstraction come in, an ORM. And so now that I sort of try to show you why you need an ORM if you're going to write a fairly decent database application, especially if you're going to have several types, entity types, then let me show you the ORM GORM, okay? So this should, in theory, work. Um, why not? We wrote it. Uh, Let's run it, see if it works. If it doesn't work, I'm not gonna try and debug it. I'm just curious. Uh, so let's see, go run main. Oh, I have to do a bunch of things. <laughs> so for one thing, this is connecting to a database, a local progress database. So if you remember, we have progress database install. At least I have it in my Mac here and notice it just started. So this tells me that it's running. I have a running progress database and I also use pg4 admin and so I start that up and that is going to take a minute to start a server and it's open in my browser and tell me there's a new version and then I can go to server and right click here and say connect to server the local server doesn't have any password and I've connected successfully and my databases so if I go down to schema public and then to tables I should see my one table, which is called user. And if we query that and view all the rows, well, we see that, oh, indeed, we do have an ID column along with, well, I was messed around with some other things, well, so we'll ignore that. But this is sort of like the data we left off with, okay? And we have an ID column. All right, so um, now I'm connected to my database and it's running. Now maybe I can run this and see. And there we go. We added another record, Peter, and we were able to iterate over it. So my basic ORM here kind of worked. All right, but that's not what I want to show you. So let's close this here. And so the one I want to show you is the one called GORM. All right, so let's go look at the documentation for GORM. Uh, it's at gorm.io and forward slash docs. And there's uh, some documentation. Um, but basically, it tells you, so these are some of the features. And again, if you're going to write a serious database application, these are things you're going to care about. Transaction boundary, okay? And because you're going to have a number of entities, you're going to want to abstract and not keep rewriting code to insert object for the same table and all this other stuff. 
and then there are nice before and after creates type things and after save and before save and so on that comes in very handy again when you write certain type of applications like for before saving a user take the password and salt it um after reading a user record remove the password field turn it to null so that if you send it over the wire the password is not included those are the type of things that um these patterns that come up over and over and over and certainly things like handling many to many relationships and so on and if you create a user how to just say well i want to fetch all the messages that this user created or all the channels they belong to these sort of things become very very easy when you use an ORM. So the way you install it is you do that. And so I already installed it, but it doesn't hurt for me to run it again. And it's fairly easy to use. Um, of course, you import the GORM package. And this is the dialect. This is just another name for the to get the side effect of the database you want to use. And we are using so far, at least in my example, I'm using the progress postgres um, database so that's the link to it and this is sufficient um, of course if you don't want to worry about that you can just use this sort of wrapper that they provide for gorm and basically the dialect progress postgres will point to exactly the same thing so you can use that instead so let me just grab this and i'll paste this here and like i said i could use what i have there or I could use their dialect Postgres, okay? And it's the same exact same thing, um, okay. And so now, well, let's see how to open a database. Well, very, very easy. You say go and open, you say with a database dialect you want, and then the connection string. So, and then notice you do the default close. And when you open a GORM data, when you use GORM, you get in a database back, okay? So we do the same thing. Gorm open progress uses the connection string. We get a database back. Same thing. We close it. Okay. All right. No, no change there really other than from SQL to Gorm for that one. Okay. Um, here, um, what we did before was we created the, the table and then we we're able to insert records into it. And we can certainly do that. Um, so now that we have a database, um, let's remove this. I don't need this anymore. We don't need this. I don't have an ORM. I don't intend to write one. Let's take out these functions. Okay, they just go away. And so how do you use this database now? Well, we have a user object and we can say database, that, uh, wait a second, uh, let me make sure that oh, I'm having the right type. Oh, I have an error. Oh, okay. let's get rid of those that we don't need. Okay, so database that create, and notice that that works. I pass the user type, and let's see if this works. And I check for a warning. If there's a warning, log it. And same thing here. Um, database that query I don't think this is gonna work like this so let's comment out this for now save it and let's run the code again so this time I'll run it from out here oh um, this is taking a long time oh it's finished so I'll say go run main and let's see so ignore these warning this is from my operating system but what do we have a warning um, so something was nil, um, some map or something. Uh, let's see, message is not too descriptive. Um, wish it would have been a little bit more descriptive. So let's do errors that um, we have it as a string now. Anyway, so I think what's happening though is, um, let's just start a transaction. I think is because I need to call database that model and tell it what type of database I'm using and then say that create on not that, database that model and then call create on that. And so what this does is database that model, you select basically the table by past, passing our 
an object to represent that table. Now this wouldn't make much sense right now because I already have a table, but I'll show you how this is gonna make sense. And so you can actually pass an object you have created or you can just create one, like an empty object like this. Um, so that's fine. And then this is the, so this says, basically this is the table I want to use. And on this table, I want to do a create. And so before when I call create directly in the database, I did not really select which table, even though you think it should probably infer it from the type. But let's run this again and see if that was the issue. And no, I'm still getting a warning. Uh, let me see if it's actually inserting anything into my database. I had four objects before. I run it twice just now. I should get um, six objects if it's working. And it's actually working. It's just giving me a real warning, which is really strange. So it is inserting records. Um, this is the first time when I run with my ORM and this is the past two times I ran it. And just in case we doubt it, let's run it again and refresh. And we should have a second record. And so, yeah, it is in certain records. It is working. i uh, just not sure why the error message um, that I'm getting here is not, is not nil. Well, it should, um, we should be if error message is not nil, but for whatever reason. Oh, um, I, where am I, is this coming in? Uh, oh, I know why. <laughs> because, my bad. When you call create, it returns a database. Uh, my bad. What I really want this to do is to return the error. So I want us to do this. And now it's going to work as expected. Because what I was returning before was the database object. And notice, yep, no error message. So that was working. It was just simply returning the database so you can chain things together. So this is a database. When I call model, it returns a database. And on that model, I call create, which also returns a database. And I kind of keep chaining more and more commands together. So, so that's what's happening. Okay, so now we can do create and we insert a record. Um, but let me, so why this model thing? Well, let's say I did not have a table. And so for that, I will go de delete the table, drop the table I have. So let's drop it. So I don't have a table right now. Um, if I try to run this, this is going to fail. So no table. So refresh this, no table. Okay. So one of the things I can do instead of creating a table myself or using explicit create table um, SQL command, I can just ask this ORM to do it for me. I can say database that auto migrate. And again, I pass a sort of example or the type an object of that type that I want it to create a database for a table for and it's going to create a table called users so it used the plural form and you could configure all these sort of things and so I need an object and now it will actually create a table for me and when I ready to use it I'm basically saying select the table that was created using this object now again it could have been this existing object that I have here, it doesn't really matter. I just needed a type to indicate which table to use. So um, it looks sort of weird to reuse this object twice. That's why I like doing this. So it's clear that what I'm just passing here is just a, an object for it to know which model I want to use or which table. And then on that table, I'm calling create. So let's run this now and go refresh our table. And look at it, and you'll see we have a table. And we can view the data in that table, and we should have one record, right? So this is really nice because you can see the immediate advantage of using an ORM. You didn't have to fuss around with the create syntax for MySQL or Postgre or whatever. If you move from database to database, and then in a real application, you will want to test against one database and deploy against another database. And that is what I'd like to show you now. So let's imagine that you intend to use progress for production, but what you intend to use is a SQLite database for testing. So you can do SQLite three, and for the connection string is just the file to use. So let's call it testDB. And I wanna show you that I do not have a testDB file here because SQL uses a file as the database instead of a server. And so let's 
make this string a constant so that we don't get bothered by it you know it doesn't keep complaining so let's do that make this a constant it doesn't complain uh, we're not using it if it's a variable it's going to complain all right we could have made a ver global variable too and it wouldn't have been a problem okay so now when i run this no, I'm not querying back anything, but notice my database is created. And so now I can easily, I'll close this, I can easily develop my application against something that I can destroy easily, like this test database, because SQL can delete it and recreate it as many times as I like. Or even if I had a different database, like let's say I wanted to test, develop again MySQL server that's running on my machine or something. So I can keep production, staging, and all these databases separate and my ORM will take care of how to properly use the create statement because create table and even some of the insert and select and so on, they vary um, between databases. And so this ORM abstracts that. Well, the real work is being done by the awesome driver from the goal library. But at the same time, the ORM is still having to do things like do run the insert statement because the libraries for the drive for the databases still expect you to do an insert or create um, sql statements and so the orm has to still generate those all right okay so so that's fine all right so one way in which you might want to query some data is um, by saying that let's see how many users we have and we did this before and it's very very easy so let's do this and so basically again you want to say which table you want to query and so you can say and this is a pointer so to our object and so it's not there, there's a query method um but if you use the find method sort of easier to use and this would find all objects um, I believe also you might be able to just um, and so let's see if I can get why isn't this so database that model oh, again I did the same thing there we go and so you pass an object that you want to find um, if you want to find multiple objects then you simply leave this empty but if you pass an object within here for example if you put user it would find one object only and so but otherwise it find all the objects and the help for this actually it's all right here so let's see if you go here to query it shows you that you can find the first object you can do take, you can do last, you can find, you know, all users um, by you passing this thing users. But um, I find that oh, if you, and then of course there's way to do like where clause and all these other things, right? Um, but I find the easiest way is to simply, um, simply call find. And of course you can use query, there's a query um, method. Um, but um, I haven't used it. Um, you can do count, group by. Notice all these things that you would have to generate explicit SQL for, and you can, but notice it takes care generated for you. But anyway, so the thing that you can use though is um, you can look up all the rows of the user. So let's see, let's go back to our code. And Mm -hmm. Why is this complaining? Too few, few parameters. Oh, okay. I'll put user in there. Um, um, but what you need is this, that, rows. And if you call this rows method, you could get the users back, for example. And then now you can iterate over this by calling for users that next and then you can get each user
pass it in the rows, which is users. There are multiple ways of doing this. And then I want to put it in this user object and now print it out. And so uh, let, this should allow us to print out our users. So let's run it and see. And there we go. So we read back the two users. And if we keep running this, we should have like three users and so on. And because we keep inserting a new user and then we fetch them back the users. So as you can see, it's not very different from using the database itself, but the database driver directory directly. But notice that you have so many other things you can do limit, find, count, offset, all these things you just have to write the SQL statement for and then use database that execute. But here you can just use these methods. So definitely recommend that you investigate it. There were some things that I had issues with. Um, for example, there's this idea of querying an association. Um, da, da, da. Uh, I was able to get it to insert a number of records that, let's say, for user has messages, you can insert um, message. Let me show you that. But to query it back, I couldn't get it to work. So let's say I had a... Oh, there's something else I can show you. Uh, so when we created our table, if you look at the table, too many things here. Um, notice we don't have a primary key. So let me delete this table, drop this. Actually, I can, I can keep it. Um, but let's say the nice thing is that you can evolve your schema and this auto migrate takes care of it. For example, we have a table here already with some data. Um, well, actually I'm using the SQL um, thing, but the SQLite database, but I can easily switch that so you can see what I mean. So that's how easy it is to switch, <laughs> okay? Um, and so let's just say that I decided that I wanted a ID field, for example. So I want an ID field and it's of, like, you know, you in, for example. And so by simply adding this to my schema, now, when I rerun my program, uh, da, da, da. okay, that's because when we go to create, uh, let me put this down at the bottom because, uh, well, actually, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'll do ID, uh, no, not ID, I'll do name. So I'll name the fields and that way I can leave some fields uninitialized. Username, password. Okay, so this is okay now. Uh, so let me run this. And now let's see what it did here. So we refresh, okay, tables, refresh. And if I look at the columns, well, I could rerun this. Notice how it added this ID field. So I did not lose my existing data. So it's nice to be able to evolve your schema. And from the documentation, they tell you that they add columns, but they don't drop any. So for example, if in my code, I remove a column, it wouldn't drop it from the, um, the table here because it doesn't want you to lose data. But that's a decision that, you know, uh, while it's safe, you know, different ORM take different approaches, blah, blah, blah. But it's still really nice that how you can keep sort of evolving your schema. Um, there are some other things that, it, that this comes with that's really, really nice. And so, for example, if I say, and I insert a field like that. And so let's um, run it again. And bam, and it's created uh, a record for me. Um, notice it only returned one of those records. Well, uh, look at this. Well, that's because no, notice how it automatically inserted the time when this record was created because it understand a field created at as a field that you'd want to track when the record was created. I can even go further and do like, I think updated at and deleted at. So I can do updated at. And if you've played with an ORM before, it has these sort of things. You've probably seen these before and other thing. And let's make this a pointer. Um, it can use either, if it's a pointer or not. And so let me show you what the result of this is. So um, let's run. And refresh. 
and again notice it only fetched back one record because it found null for those other records for this field or the updated field so it didn't think but notice how my updated and my created fields are modified but deleted is not because this record is not deleted but it was created and in creating it you had to update it so notice how it's smart enough to do that and if i delete or this or just update this record it would just update this field and if i delete it it would mark this field as delete but it doesn't really delete the record but it would skip reading it so there are all these sort of things that are very very cool <laughs> there's a nice convenient for these things because most people who use orm or write entity objects um types need to put an id and then the created model updated and so on they have made it convenient for you by embedding those three fields in gorm that model and so if you just embed this structure and notice it's just a simple structure it's exactly what i would have written except that it says to index this deleted field on this delete field so that way if you delete some stuff you can quickly find them and also it says that the id field should be the primary key which is what i did not have in mind so if i again drop this table oh by the way if i go to this table and i go properties and i look at columns you can see here that id field is you know not null um, some of the other ones are null and the primary key is there's no primary key and these are all things you can specify on your when you go to create so if i wanted password to not be null or username i can do structure tags on it and i could say not null i believe is how you specify it uh, it could be wrong um, um is either that or it's So something like that um, but either way you can just look at the documentation and it tells you how to when declaring models how to specify something is not null uh, and unique and all these other things and so there we go not null it's two words all right and so uh, it's this and so let's see if this should make my username and password not nulls so if I delete it and recreate them uh, let's delete this user table, drop it, and recreate the objects. Rerun this. And so we run a query. Oh, oh I need to refresh my table. And there we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can see primary key is now a primary key. Same thing. As I expect, notice I have updated and so on, and I have my name, username, and so on. And if I go to the properties of this table and look, you'll see that our username and password not null. Name I said was allowed to be null, but of course, makes sense, right? So these are all very nice and convenient things to be able to do. Okay, so I was about to show you something else. So let's say I wanted to say that users can have many messages, which we know user compose a message. So, so let's say a message has a body, which is a string, and again, it's not now. And let's say we also want the same sort of thing for messages, which is the ID and so on. So we do this. I'll put it at the bottom because eh, I want my field that I'm interested in to show up first. Now, how do I relate a message to a user? Well, I must say that a message has a user object, but I don't really want to store a full user object. So really what I want to store is just a user ID that let's say it's uint that ties back to the ID that we would link to a user object. How do I then say that for each user, I want to be able to find all their um, messages? Well, ideally, if I have a user, I would want to be able to say something like, right? Something like that. And that should allow me to know when I create a message, say which user it belongs to. And then if I have a user, if I can lazy load or even aggressively um, 
or even if I, I aggressively load the messages I can from that user navigate to all their messages. So what if we create some messages? And so I'll do this. See what I'm typing. So there's some messages. So I created some messages and now I want to link those messages to a user. So I showed you earlier how you can find a user and we can certainly use the find method to find the first user. So this finds the very first user and not necessarily the first one that was inserted because if we want the first one, we could say first, but say find just gives us a user. So we get back a user, we don't care which one. And now how do we now append or insert records, records for this user. Now we could have said, you know, there are multiple ways of doing this. We could iterate over our messages and we could have easily said something like this, m that user, uh, user is equals to the user that we want to save associate with this message. And then we can set database that model and then, you know, the message table is which one is the one I want to use and then create. So I could have done that and then the message I want to save. So this would work. This is sort of how we created our user before. But there's another way in which we can say, look up the model um, user and there's an association on that model, which is messages. How do we know it's messages? Because here's that association messages. And we want to append to that association this message. So notice uh, this is just a message. Now I will, for the time being, comma, comma, take this out. So when I append the message M, this is just a message. It doesn't have any reference to the user whatsoever that I'm associating it with, which is this user. And so now let's run this and see what happens. And so, of course, we have we, it does not exist. And the reason it doesn't exist is because we never created that table user. So uh, we need to. Oh, we never created our profile table either. But okay, uh, we could do either both. So we set profile table and our message table. Remember this auto generate auto migrate. Sorry, creates your table for you. So now when we say create this table, we run this and we don't have any issue we go back here we refresh our tables and there's our profile table with its column well we didn't, the column didn't show up there we have to look into that but there's our message table let's see if we have any data in it and there we go notice how we have the same thing the primary key and all those other good stuff but notice my messages are there and they're associated to the user id Whichever user it is that I found um, is associated with that, with that user. But interestingly, I only said to append to this association for this user. And notice how it updated my message object, this M, with the ID of this user. So these are that sort of thing that make it very convenient. All these are reasons why you should consider using something, an ORM. What I had a problem with was trying to fetch if I have this user and I say, well, fetch all the messages. That is where I had some problems. Um, it didn't quite work. Uh, I don't think it's a bug. I just think it's uh, me not playing with it enough. But if you go over to the GitHub for project website and you scroll down and there's a code and you'll see association tests that go and you click on this and you can see examples of how to use those distant associations. So notice I use the same one that association category append is the one I just used, except mine was called messages, but that's because this post has a field called category instead of categories, but whatever. And then, you know, they show you how to query the association and so on, delete objects from the association. So definitely check out the example code, the test code. If you find that the documentation is not quite, um, doesn't work, work quite exactly this, the way it's, the code is, doesn't work exactly as documented, go check out the test cases. All right, so I don't wanna make this too long. Um, I think that's pretty much it. There's a lot here to cover. Uh, I haven't used this yet um, for any serious project. I, I looked at it because 
I was interested in, well, okay, if there's some Google drivers for um, SQL, was there an ORM that makes it very easy to use some of those drivers? And like I said, I come from a Java where I've written, written a number of database application and you wouldn't think about writing a serious database application without writing an or using an ORM, not writing one, using one. And so um, that's why. Um, here you can find some information about the different dialects and how to use them. Um, so definitely look into that also. Um, that's it. Uh, take care and see you in the next video. The next video might be a little late also because um, in two weeks I'll be on the road, but I'll try and see if I can get it up or before I get on the road. And sorry about this one being late, but with the Florence, the storm coming through my neighborhood also, um, things were a little bit delayed. Thanks for your support. Bye.